and welcome to this video where I will cover the basics of creating and managing questions in Maple TA, working with Brightspace. You will receive two Maple TA classes for your Brightspace course and the links are placed on your page. The question bank, also known as the parent, is the class where you manage your questions and the year class, also known as the child in Maple TA, is where you create your test quizzes and link them to Brightspace. Click on the question bank and a new tab opens. The link from Brightspace leads to the home page of the question bank class. In this question bank we will make some questions which we can later use in our first assignment. In the navigation bar only the content repository is of interest in this video. If you click on the content repository you will see four columns and they can be folded in when you click on the title. In Sources, the default is the current class. Below that you can see all of my classes. Here you can find the content of your other classes in which you are an instructor. In Maple TA you can share questions with the entire TU Delft and you can even share content with the entire MapleTA community in the Maple Cloud. But sharing content is not done automatically. You have to actively select pieces of content and share these to one of the sources. In the second column, you will see a number of sections. The first is the assignment section, which we will cover in a second video, but here is where you create and manage your assignments, quizzes or tests or whatever you prefer to call them. The second section is all content types, and all content types is used as a container for questions and text. The difference between those two is that a question has a response field and a text item doesn't. But you can use text items, for example, when you want to create a cover sheet that has information on it about the quiz. Below that you will see themes that has to do with the look and feel of a class, but we don't use them yet. Course modules is a way to export your content as a zip file. Subjects can be seen as labels you can add to questions and the final item, schools, is a feature that is still in, in development. If you click on the question section, then there are two ways to create a new question. On the top left button and on the bottom right. This last button also gives an option to create a group, which is very practical in structuring your questions. Okay, so let's create a new question. Give this question a name, a preferably a name that helps you to find it later when you've made dozens of questions. And we will make it a multiple choice question. So click uh, on the question text field and insert the question text. In this case, what is 20 and 30. Now click on the response area button and you will see a new window in which you can select the question type you want to use. And for this question we will use the multiple choice question type. Whenever you click on a question type you will see the preferences that belong to that particular question type. Here you can specify if you want to make it a single or multiple selection to shuffle the answers or not, and to change the display. Fill in the answers. And you can simply delete or add a choice. And click on OK. Now you have to select the right value, uh, the select correct value, and click OK. You will now see the answers in your question text box.
If you click on save and then click on preview, you will see a preview of the question and you can test it whether you have done it right or wrong. If you want to change it, double click on the response field. It will open again and you can change some values here. Save and close this question. Now you see the details of the question, uh, such as the author and in which group it belongs to. Let's make another question. And this time it's question two. And we're going to make it a numeric question. on the response area button, choose the nu numeric question type, fill in the answer and decide whether it should be an absolute accurate uh, answer or a margin of error is allowed. Click on OK, save and preview so you can check your answer. So uh, something about uh, giving feedback in a question. There are two ways to add feedback. Um, the first is feedback that will be shown to students uh, during the test and this is done in the feedback tab. So if you place uh, your feedback text here, and this can also be a link or a picture, and there is also feedback here, and this feedback will be shown after the test. So if you save this question and preview it, you will see the feedback during the test if a student clicks on how did I do and you have to hover over the response field area and here you can see the feedback. If you click on preview and you use grade and that is after the test, then you will see the feedback here. So those are the two feedback options you have. Now we have two questions, and because they have the same topic, I'm going to place them in a group called Introduction. Click on Create New Group. give it a name and you will see the group here. Now to move the questions into this group you have to first select them and you will see a new menu bar appearing at the bottom of your, page, of your screen and here you have the option add to. We're going to place the two questions into the introduction group and here you have the two uh, options add to and move to. Uh, if you choose add to you will see the questions both both in the root group as in the new group. Uh, this is however not a copy but in this case we want to move it to the introduction group. So this is done only nothing happens and that is because you have to refresh your screen using F5. You will see the introduction group and here you will see the uh, two questions and you also see two create new buttons one for the root group 
and one for this introduction group. Now it is possible to make new groups within existing groups, but we advise you not to make too many group levels. I would say a maximum of two levels. So let's make a third question in. So let's make a third question, create new question. We give it a name and in this question we're going to use a list. In this question we will add an image and we're going to use this image button for that. If you click on it, select the upload tab and click on choose file. Find your image you want to place in this question and send it to the server. You can add the width and the height and we're going to make it 300 and click OK <coughs> and the image is placed in this question. Below that we're going to add the question text and that is name nerve number one. Click on the response area and choose list. Uh, we're going to use a drop down menu instead of a text field and we're going to deselect the permute list uh, which is uh, shuffling the answers and we're going to add the answers here. Median and radial and the correct answer which is this one will have a weight of 1. Okay. Save the question and preview. So the question will look like this. Name nerve number one and the correct answer will be this one. And that is correct. Okay, we're going to close this one and save and close the question. So we now have uh, three questions in our group. And if you want to reuse the main part of your question, you can select it and choose clone. And we're going to do that for number three. Click on it. The menu bar at the bottom of the screen is visible again and click on clone. That is done. It's not visible. We have to click on F5 again to refresh the screen. And you will see that the clone is placed in the root folder. If you click on the question, you can edit this one, delete the clone part, change the number, and change the text and the correct value. So this is a very uh, simple way to create multiple questions. Um, we still have to place the question into the introduction, select it, add to, select the group you want to add it to and say move to. Done. And don't forget to click on F5. So now we have four questions in this group and uh, you can sort these questions if you want by clicking on sort and then you can sort them by name, created and modified or choose manual in which you can drag and drop them in place. Okay, so this was a short introduction on how to create and manage questions. In the next video, we will set up an assignment with these questions.